So, once again, folks, I think we catch ourselves in a real lull for the FPS space at the moment. Between games just having their support outright cancelled, updates being delayed indefinitely, or developers just straight up yeeting their projects into the sun through crappy decision making, not looking at anyone in particular here, there's just not a lot going on right now that's exciting. Well, that was until I started to see more about this little number, Delta Force Hawk Ops. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today folks, let's take a look at some gameplay from Delta Force Hawk Ops and go over why you should definitely have this game on your radar. Now, I'm not going to lie to you here, guys. I want to make this very clear and upfront in this video. This game looks to be quickly shaping up to be the Battlefield 2042 I was expecting Battlefield 2042 to be if it was actually good. Like, no joke, if Battlefield 2042 was set in a grungier, more down-to-earth universe with far more polish, attention to detail, and quality behind its gameplay, this is the kind of product that I would have envisaged or expected, if you will. And I don't think I'm the only way who feels this way. There's a lot of people I've seen in the community who have either been, you know, lucky enough to play Delta Force already, or who have just been keeping a keen eye on the trailers, saying that this game looks like the alternate timeline version of Battlefield 2042 that we never got. The good version. And in my opinion, that's not a bad thing at all here, folks. Now, unfortunately, I have not had a chance to get some hands-on time with the game as of yet. The footage you're seeing in the background is primarily media kit footage that I was provided by the developers, hence why all of the overlays are in Chinese, I believe. There is an EU playtest live at the time of recording this video, but as someone who lives all the way down in Australia, it's safe to say that the curse of the geographical RNG has foiled me once more, and I really didn't feel like swimming to Europe. But nonetheless, I am very much hoping to get my hands on this game this weekend for the alpha test. So if you guys are keen to see gameplay from that, be sure to get subscribed here on YouTube and follow us over on Twitch as well. We are going to be doing a lot of content for this game as soon as I get my hands on it, especially if it shapes up to be anywhere near as good as it looks so far. Now, for those of you who haven't heard much about this game as of yet, allow me to break it down for you. This is a long-awaited successor to the original Delta Force games. Unfortunately, games that were before my time and I never had the chance to play, but I understand they were basically cult classics in their day. The new game here aims to bring a large-scale 32v32 multiplayer mode that appears to be incredibly reminiscent of the Battlefield formula that we've all come to know and love and, uh, funnily enough, also long for as of late. But but that's not all. The game is also going to launch with an extraction shooter mode that sets to take on the likes of Tarkov with a deep looting system and in-game economy. And on top of that, we're also expecting to see a single player campaign from the game that is set in none other than the Black Hawk Down story. And it sounds like the developers are really aiming to tell an immersive, authentic, boots on the ground rendition of that story. So in theory, we are truly getting a complete package here if the developers can deliver on all this. Dare I say it will be a pretty compelling boot up the backside for the rest of the industry if the developers can pull this off. Delving a little bit deeper into the gameplay itself here, the gunplay on first impression is looking incredibly tight and enjoyable. Once again, drawing a comparison to Battlefield 2042 here, we appear to be rocking a more or less sort of laser beamy design with a limited spread as you go over longer bursts, but some visual recoil to help counterbalance that. The time to kill is looking pretty snappy as well here, with this kill in particular only taking four rounds to down a target with what appears to be an AKS-74U. So for a lot of you out there who enjoy a snappier time to kill in your games, this is going to be a very big box tick for you as well. The sniping also looks clean as well here. We can see some pretty solid sniping action in this gameplay with, you know, bullet drop, having to lead targets, all that fun stuff coming to the game too. Again, very much in line with what you'd expect out of, say, a battlefield game. I do also want to touch on the mechanical customization element of the gunplay here as well, because based on what we've seen so far from the EU test, as well as what we can see in the test footage that I've got my hands on here, it looks like we are going to be completely unlimited in how we're able to customize our weapons. Because from my understanding, there is no limit on the actual attachment count here. You can equip as many attachments as your heart desires. And that's going to include things like barrels, muzzles, underbarrel grips, stocks, magazines, 
sights, rear grips, side rails, everything you'd come to expect out of a weapon customization system here appears to be up for grabs. And it also looks like we're going to be able to tune these weapon attachments similar to what we could do in COD Modern Warfare 2 with its gunsmith system. And we could actually see the extent of this customization in action between these two different M4A1 builds here in the gameplay. While the M4A1 in this particular gameplay features a foregrip, standard barrel length, and a basic sight, the M4A1 here is shown to have an angled grip, an incredibly shortened barrel, a custom stock, laser sight mounted on the top rail, and a mag grip attachment for improved reloading. Truth be told, there's not much I like more in shooter games these days than jumping into a deep customization system and really being able to build out an awesome loadout. It sounds like this game in that capacity is going to be a wet dream for myself and for many. Now obviously it's hard to judge the weaponry and how the gunplay is going to feel without getting my hands on it, but one thing I can comment on here is how authentic the game's take on weaponry is so far. For every weapon that I've seen footage of, the animations, the sound design, the models, everything looks incredibly impressive and grounded once again in that sense of reality. It's something that we've seen a lot of FPS games stray from as of late, especially with, you know, the wacky cosmetics that throw the visual identity of said games completely out the window. Now that's not to say that won't happen with Delta Force. This is going to be a free-to-play game as far as I'm aware, so I'm expecting microtransactions to feed into the game at some point, which may mess with the visual identity as we know. But it's nice to see the core designs of the weapons here maintaining a degree of authenticity. It's just good to see. From a map design perspective as well, everything looks incredibly grounded as well in that sense of authenticity, and the maps look like they're combat zones with unique gameplay experiences to enjoy. For example, this gameplay here sees a team storming a beach D-Day style in attack boats, forced to push their way up past weapon men placements. In the exact same clip, on the same map, we can see the match moving into some heavy CQC environments, the kinds of spaces that give the likes of Operation Metro a run for their money. Given the scale of the match sizes here, being 32v32 for multiplayer experiences, it's clear the developers have not had to worry about, you know, spreading a extremely large player base over a very open and barren map that holds a couple of POIs to drive the engagement. With a smaller player count, the maps are better designed and are going to encourage far better combat. I tell you guys, the joys of showing some restraint in your game design, hey? I mean, sometimes bigger isn't always better. Let's just say that much. Now, let's quickly touch on one element of the game that I think will either be a deal breaker or a damn close one for many people out there. The fact that, yes, this is yet another game rocking operators or quote-unquote heroes as opposed to just generic soldiers running generic classes. Now, don't get me wrong. The developers have sorted these operators into four distinct class archetypes and it appears as though those classes, therefore, are only going to have access to certain gear and certain weaponry classes. So in a way, there will still be a sense of overall, let's say, better cohesion between teammates because everyone will still have their select role to play even if you are playing as an operator per se. One thing I also do want to note here is that the operators in question don't feel like they're out of place in the overall vibe of the game so far. Yes, they are named operators and are just not generic soldiers like many are hoping for, but they also do look like they fit within the setting of military conflict, and that is a step above a lot of the competition that we've seen lately, once again looking at you, Battlefield 2042. Some of the class abilities we've seen in action so far also look pretty sweet and not too intrusive on the core gameplay of being a first person shooter. You know, they don't feel too cheesy, if you will. As an example, we can see this support character drop these drones that appear to deploy a wall of smoke in the gameplay, a utility based ability that is going to go a long way in helping teams close gaps between cover and push objectives, but again, not break the flow of the core gameplay. We can also see this assault character activate an exosuit ability, which is allowing for a quick burst of speed to get a flank and start murking some bad guys from behind. Again, not overly intrusive, and with the way the classes are organized, still gives the game enough structure to the point where it's not going to feel like a bunch of headless chickens running around, not helping each other. Between you and me, guys, I am very, very excited for Delta Force Hawk Ops. This game was kind of sitting under my radar for quite some time, but as I've heard more and more about it, and I'm starting to see more gameplay from this EU test and from the test footage that I've been given from the developers, I genuinely feel here that the quality is a step above a lot of the competition in the space right now. Now. And if there is one thing the first person shooter industry has required as of late, 
it's more competition. There's been a lot of franchises out there as of late that have really gained a monopoly stronghold on their particular subgenre of choice within the first person shooter genre more broadly. The two goliaths of the industry being Call of Duty and Battlefield have been asleep at the wheel for quite some time now. They keep taking steps away what the community is after and on top of that they just keep releasing, I'm gonna say it, shitty products. Products that feel like downgrades or just asset flips of games that they've released in the past. And again, that happens when you have no competition pushing you to be better in your space. Because if something else comes out and it's better than what you're doing, you're going to lose out. That is the joys of competition in the commercial world. And for that reason, I don't want Delta Force to straight up kill the Battlefield franchise. I want the Battlefield franchise to see this as a challenge and bite back at Delta Force, making its own game better and innovating in ways that brings its player base back. Again, I don't want this game to be a Battlefield killer. I just want it to be the competition that Battlefield so desperately needs. And everything that I've seen so far from this game tells me that we're in for a treat in that regard at the very least. But folks, with all of that said, that is everything I've got for you guys today when it comes to Delta Force Hawk Ops. I cannot tell you how excited I am to potentially get my hands on this game at the end of the week. And if I do, I'm going to be bringing you guys so much content on it, so make sure you get subscribed if you've not done so already. I hope to welcome you guys to the channel and to the broader community. Give the video a like if you enjoyed the video today too, and let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on the game so far. Are you excited, skeptical, or you think this is a total waste of time? Let me know down below. But until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.